Look, staying in any job for 70 years is an achievement. And when that job is head of state and you become the longest serving head of state, certainly in the history of these islands, and I suspect perhaps the world, I don't know of another ruler, if we can use that word, that has been in power for 70 years. But in any case, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, happy jubilee, and that's the last I'll say on it. I have no intention of raining on anybody's parade. I don't believe in micturating on other people's cherished traditions and their deepest held beliefs, even where, as in this case, I don't share them. I am, of course, a Republican. I don't want an executive president, so hold back your, we might get President Blair or we might get President David Cameron or all of that. I don't even necessarily need an election for a president. We can indirectly elect someone who's never been in politics before, whose only job is to look benign in a review parade, shake hands with visiting dignitaries, throw dinners, and sign off on legislation. Come to think of it, it's not a bad job, nice work if you can get it. I'm not talking about a switch from the monarchy to an executive presidency like they've got in, for example, France or the United States. I made the point the other day, let me make it again now for our American viewers in particular, but also our international viewers of a liberal bent. If I was an American, I wouldn't give up my weapons either at the behest of Joe Biden, a corrupt tyrant in a country where there are already 500 million guns in circulation, a country which is the most unequal country on the earth with all that that entails, a country with a history of genocide, of slavery, and of civil war. I wouldn't give my weapons up to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and neither should you, good citizens of the United States. There are many other things that will have to be done to control the mass shootings that are happening not just every day, but several times a day in the United States. But trying to disarm 350 million people and 500 million guns is a fool's errand if ever I heard of one. And we'll be talking, of course, about the war. The war drags on. I spoke yesterday at a webinar hosted by the Galway Anti-War Movement, a fine organization on the west of Ireland with whom, with which I've been associated for many decades through my good friend Niall Farrell and his good wife Jenny and many other friends in Galway. I was sharing a platform uh, with uh, Professor Noam Chomsky and I think the veteran journalist and filmmaker John Pilger and the wonderful Claire Daly and Mick Wallace, both members of the European Parliament from Ireland. I didn't actually see the latter three on screen. I'm taking it as read that they appeared as advertised. But if you want to go and Look at the footage from that webinar with such illustrious and multiply elected politicians on it. Up comes a warning from Twitter that this links to a Russian state media affiliate. I've got to tell you, Twitter, I'm losing whatever remaining patience I had with you. I'm already suing you in the courts. But I am minded now 
at this latest outrage of yours to organize a class action on behalf of everyone who has been wronged by you and your failure to live up to uh, the much trumpeted role you gave yourself as the keeper of the public square. It's not just that Noam Chomsky, Claire Daly and me, and John Pilger, a man that was writing front page exposes and making award-winning television programs when the skinny jeans and sneakers, man bun, man handbag carriers at Twitter were not even born, should be dubbed as Russian state affiliated media. It's that Sahur Saxo, Sarah Abdullah, with 200,000 followers, scrubbed from Twitter just like that. It's that my friend Danny Haifong in the United States for daring to question of the prevailing narrative over Tiananmen Square is wiped off Twitter this day unless, like a pistol pointed at his head, he agrees to delete a tweet that he in all conscience believes in. Who are you to tell people to delete of their sincerely held views? Who are you, by the way? I'll tell you who you are until Elon Musk takes over. You're the royal family of Saudi Arabia, principal shareholder. Do you think we're going to tolerate the royal family of Saudi Arabia deciding what views can be written and published and which views cannot. Do you think we will go with equanimity into that good night? Do you think we'll allow the royal family of Saudi Arabia to brand Noam Chomsky as Russian state affiliated media? Do you? Because you've got another think coming. Because you see the actions that you are increasingly taking prove that you are the publisher of Twitter and that Twitter is therefore a publication. It is not as you have legally asserted, merely a notice board on which anyone can write whatever they like, and you have no responsibility for it. You have now eschewed that get-out clause, that get-out-of-jail clause, because you are acting as intrusive a publisher as any Beaverbrook, as any Murdoch, as any magnate, any mogul, has ever acted. And that's okay if you're honest about it, if you don't pretend to be something that you are not, and if the rest of us can sue you every time we are defamed on your platform. Because for me, that's 10, 20, 30, 50 times a day. I note that there's a controversy running about whether or not Boris Johnson was booed at St. Paul's Cathedral when he showed up for the Queen's Jubilee service. Some people say the boos were of a tiny handful of people. Some people say there were far more cheers, cheers than boos. Some people say the opposite. I'm here to say, who cares? I've never understood the significance selective significance that media apply to people booing. By the grace of God, I have six children. Me and my good wife can muster eight booers 
at any event, at the drop of a hat, we can go and boo and get on the television with the report that whoever it was we booed was booed. But what does it mean other than that in my household we booed the woman or the man that turned up to the event? It means nothing. I'm the leader of the Workers' Party of Britain. I can call on my comrades right now. I can feel the 100, 200 of them right now to go anywhere and boo anybody. But what will that actually mean other than that 100 or 200 members of the Workers' Party, either out of loyalty and love for me as their leader or because they hate the person I asked them to boo. That's all that it means. People's popularity cannot be measured in who booed or cheered them because it depends on that most capricious of happenstances who actually turned up at that place or was mobilized to turn up at that place. Everybody in public life has people who absolutely love them. Even me. I was in the Chinese supermarket in Manchester yesterday and the first person I met what turns out to be an eminent academic and author, a Chinaman, who embraced me and asked for a selfie with me and then uh, tweeted it. I meet people like that all the time that really love me. The great majority of people that I meet or come across neither love me nor hate me. Maybe don't even know me or don't care to. And there's a number of people who hate me so much that they'll not just boo me from behind their screens. And they will issue threats to kill me. They will issue insults, blood curdling, not just against me, even against my wife, even against my children, even against the football jerseys that my children are wearing. Why do I mention all of this? Because it doesn't mean Boris Johnson is any closer to being no confidence because a half a dozen members of the Socialist Workers' Party jeered and booed him at St. Paul's and went there for that purpose. Neither does it mean that because the vast majority of the media hate Harry and Meghan, that the people hate Harry and Meghan. As a matter of fact, I actually think that Harry and Meghan are more popular than Charles and Camilla. Not that that's saying all that much. Mutt and Jeff are more popular than Charles and Camilla. Burke and Hare are more popular than Charles and Camilla. Tony Blair and Alastair Campbell, to name just three duos that are more popular than Charles and Camilla. But my point is, sick transit gloria. Some people love you, some people hate you. Most people don't give a toss one way or the other. That's why you need to know and listen to both sides of every story. Which brings me back to the new McCarthyism in which we're gripped. You see, if it were not for my friends Niall and Jenny in Galway organizing that webinar yesterday, the people who watched it who notwithstanding Twitter's efforts are many, wide and varied, would never have been able to hear that side of the story that we represent. And that's bad for two reasons, one of them more important than the other. The least of the two reasons is that this McCarthyism this extirpation, this false branding, this shadow banning, 
Me and Peter Hitchens can't get our Twitter follower numbers above a certain number. As soon as it reaches that number, it begins to come down. Nobody could be, no two people could be further apart than me and Peter Hitchens. But algorithm is deliberately seeking to keep us below a certain number. It's as clear as day. All of this makes a mockery of our shtick. Our shtick is that we are free countries. Our shtick is that we are democracies filled with charity and freedom of speech and expression. It makes it a mockery because, of course, you can't have virtually total censorship not just in mainstream media, but in now social media, on matters of war and peace, and call yourself a democracy. But the second reason why this is not just wrong, but dangerous to Britain, to America, to France, Germany, to all the people involved, in one way or another in this war in Ukraine. It's dangerous for this reason. If you don't know the other side of the story, how do you know your side is right? If you don't know that the war is now going disastrously badly for NATO and the coup regime in Kiev, Kiev, until you start calling it Paris, until you start calling Germany Deutschland or Moscow Mokba, don't ask me to change the name of Kiev. Now that the war is going disastrously wrong for NATO and Kiev, if you don't know that and the vast majority of people don't know that yet, then you'll agree to your rulers continuing to reinforce the failure. You'll agree to your rulers getting more and more deeply involved in a war that unbeknownst to, to you, because you're not allowed to know, is now going Russia's way. Big time, big, big, big time, big time. Russia has almost cut Ukraine in two. Within a matter of weeks, there'll be two Ukraines. And yet your rulers and their echo chamber in the media are continuing to lie to you about the course of the war. Lie by commission and lie by omission. I'm not prepared quietly to go into that good night. Are you? 